Welcome to the Accelerate Church TV broadcast. We are so glad that you were tuning in with us today. We are excited because Pastor Jeremy is currently teaching on Give No Place. This is a basic fundamental. As Christians, we are to give no place to the enemy. Let's head into the sanctuary right now with Pastor Jeremy File. Don't give the devil a way to defeat you. Just think about that terminology for a second, the way that that's worded. There's a lot of Christians, and I mean a lot, that they don't even relate to understanding where that's coming from. They think the devil can do what he wants when he wants, and they've lived that lifestyle. That's why they think that. That's been their experience. But you need to know that your New Testament says, don't give the devil a way to defeat you, meaning, obviously, you play a big role in what the devil can do in your life. So we've looked in this series, and we've seen that anger is a big one, right? We've looked at it. We've seen envy is a big one. And then we've been looking at hearing, and we're going to continue to look at this today because this is so important, and I've dealt with I don't even know how many uh, different things in my life and circumstances since I started talking about hearing where I just, I'm like, wow, this is what it all hinges on, such as, got to get this off my chest first thing, We had a birthday party for my daughter who turned five this week. So I got back to town late, late. I guess it actually was early Saturday morning, late Friday night. And uh, so Saturday we had a big birthday party, and there was a big blow-up. And with a big blow-up, you know, you have to have um, a machine that shoots out air to blow it up, right? So that machine's on, and... And uh, where I was working, it wasn't that fun work at, at the moment. It was actually vacuuming a swimming pool. I know a lot of people say, I wish I had that problem. Well, it's a lot of work. So I'm vacuuming, and there's a waterfall. I'm just setting this up so you understand. There's a lot of things in life that will happen that aren't sinful. And if you're not careful, you get too many things between you and your shepherd, it's hard to hear his voice. My son was so excited that the blow-up folks had just set up the blow-up. He's already on the blow-up. He was, he was watching. He couldn't wait. As soon as they got the stakes in the ground, it blew up. Boom, he's in there. Well, my, some of my kids, about three of them are in there, just jumping, hooping, and hollering. But I need some assistance. So I, I said my son's name like this, Enoch, about that loud. And there was no response. Now I'm starting to sweat at this point, even though I'm vacuuming the pool. It is hot already. It's hot in Texas. But at least we don't have that humidity. Praise our Lord. I said, Enoch! Y'all can hear me, can't you? Of course, I'm amplified. But I got a loud voice without this. Finally, I said, Enoch! I was convinced. All my neighbors just heard that. I was like, Maybe I should have handled this different. I just didn't want to have to get out at the moment, right? So nothing, no response. I look, he's just jumping, just playing. I said. <laughs> so my girls assisted me, and they're right here on the front row. They all in unison turned around and said, Enoch! <laughs> Something like that. I, I joined in with him, you know. Finally, he said, what? And I thought of this series because I thought, wow, I wonder how many Christians, they're just going about life totally oblivious that the Lord is trying to call your name. He needs you to help him. You see, we're the body of Christ on the earth. He's dependent upon you. And you don't know how many souls are dependent upon you. So maybe it's time to get compromise out of your life. Maybe it's time to pursue God with all your heart. Time is ticking. Time is short, my friends. I don't know what on earth you're doing to bring heaven here, but God's counting on you. My son came over and he walked over. Yes, sir, what is it? I said, I need you to help me. we got some work to do. Now, let me tell you, work sounds like a curse word when you're wanting to play. I just described a lot of Christian lives right there. It's time to work. I want to play. Everybody wants to play. It's time to work. Look at your neighbor and say, work. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, work. Work. Yeah, It's not a bad word. Those that are heading to heaven are not afraid to work. Amen. 
So I told him, we got to work. And he said, okay. I said, now let me ask you a question. Why do you think the neighbor over there, the neighbor over here, the neighbor across the street, probably heard me say your name and you didn't? He just looked at me. He didn't know what to say. I said, I know why. You were having so much fun, you were being loud. He said, yes, sir, that's it, that's it. That's it. That's it. Well, he went to work, and he helped me. So I hear, as soon as he was done, he started walking back. He's, he's kind of looking back. I'm watching him. I'm acting like I'm not. I'm working, right? I'm looking. As soon as, as soon as he's about to lift up his leg to get back in there, I go, Enoch! <laughs> yes, sir, he came running back that time. I said, all right, I was just checking your hearing. That's all I was doing. Now, I'm going to say this. The Lord might say something to you to just check your hearing. Like, in other words, you may say, man, I feel like the Lord was telling me this, and you don't really see, what is that? I don't see any fruit produced. I don't understand. When, when that's the way you see it from your perspective, understand, God is just checking to make sure you're still listening. And let me just tell you, when you need a word, he is never late. He's never too early. He's always right on time. We believe in linking up with like-minded believers, and that opportunity comes twice a month where we get to come together with our life links and dig into the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching on. We eat together, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships that are so vital to our Christian walk. We must be intentional with who we surround ourselves with, so we invite you to join us for Lifelinks happening on the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month. For more information regarding Lifelinks and where they meet, you can text the word Lifelinks to the number 74121, or you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc. Or hey, you can give us a call at 806 418 8913. We look forward to seeing you in the next Life Link. Jesus died for you. You need to know this truth. And don't ever forget this because no matter what you go through, you can always, through the hopelessness, look and say, But the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords died for me. It means it's not too late if I'm breathing. Praise God. There would be no salvation without him taking our place on that old wooden cross, right? He then places demands on your life that no one else is qualified to make. Not even your spouse, not even your parents, not even your children, not even your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren. Jesus will place a demand on your life that no one else is qualified to place. What does he say? You want to be great? Hop up on a cross. Who else is going to tell you that? Certainly not the major leaguer. He's going to tell you, hop in the stands and root for me. That way the owner has money to pay my contract. And it's amazing, you know. We'll wear their their gear, talk about them, study them, know all kinds of stuff. I was thinking about that when I passed by the Tennessee Titans Stadium on my way to eat some good Mexican food in Nashville. And I thought, wow, look at that. I mean, thousands of people go there eight times a year to cheer for their team. And I don't, you know, I don't give myself over to study like I used to on all that stuff, but I happen to know their quarterback used to play at Texas A&M. I happen to see, look how I can tap into that knowledge just like that. I happen to know people by the thousands have that jersey. They wear it. They root for him. They hoop. They holler and don't think a thing in the world about it. It's life, man. It's what we do. They're my Titans, man. I'm from Nashville. That's how people from there talk. You know, I know some people there. That's the way they all talk. They're my Titans, man. I love them. No one thinks anything about it, but not one of them died for you. In other words, what's radical is to say, uh, uh, you know, church attendance is the number one maneuver a Christian can do to fight off these antichrist spirits in the end time. And people say, well, but people think I'm radical if I go all the time. Yeah, but they don't think you're radical if you paint your face, if you wear a Tannehill jersey, and you show up at the Tennessee Stadium rooting and hoping and hollering, fighting off thousands of people and drunks everywhere. Right? That's normal in America. Jesus died for you. Whoever your team is, whoever your favorite, they didn't die for you. Therefore, your allegiance has to be to the one who places those demands on you at a higher level. Praise God. Write this down. Number two, Jesus rose again. 
You say, preacher, well, we, we know this. Well, good. You're hearing it again today. Jesus died for you, and Jesus rose again. Ephesians 1 tells us that when God raised Jesus up, he set him above all principality and powers and might. Yeah, that's worth shouting about. It says that in Ephesians 1 that when God raised him from the dead, he set him in a position above all principalities, all powers. That's all those demons hounding your life. It's that depression trying to hound your life. Jesus reigns above that. That's what his resurrection means. Number three, the seven truths. If you'll remember these seven truths, it'll help you through any situation. One, Jesus died for you. Two, Jesus rose again. Three, Jesus has all authority in heaven and earth. <laughs> I like this one. He's worthy of more than all we can give him. There's been many times I've gotten so stirred about the king that I'm shouting, hooping, and hollering. I'll raise my hands, and I'll think to myself, I don't have really anything adequate to give you but my shout, but my praise, but my life. What else do I have? I don't know what else to give him. Do you? I mean, uh, what can you give the king who reigns above it all, the one who has a cattle on a thousand hills? See, and people still think the tithe is about God needing your money. He don't need your money. He desires you. If you're like me, you may say, well, I don't know why. Well, he knows why. And if you'll follow him, he'll start to let you see why. Praise God. It says in Matthew 28, don't ever forget this, okay? This is a powerful truth. Verse 18, Jesus came after the resurrection, right before he was raptured to heaven. He said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. That's it. What else do you need to know? Oh, yeah, point four. Here's what you need to know. Jesus gave you his authority. <laughs> he died for you. He rose again, right? Are you tracking with me this morning? Three, he has all authority in heaven and on earth. Four, he gave you his authority. Why do you think he said in the very next verse, Matthew 28, verse 19, just the first part of it, go, therefore. Notice what he said. All authority has been given to me. You go. What does that mean? You're running with authority that's not just your authority. Hey, hey, hey. Maybe you have been here and you've been faithful long enough to, to earn the trust of a leader here that would trust you with a key to this building. But we don't do that to everyone. We even had a guy come here from another state just, you know, a few years back. He came here, and he had all these references from other pastors. I didn't trust him with the key to the building. You see what I'm talking about? And I'm not mad at anybody. I'm just telling you, I don't trust every Tom, Dick, and Harry that walks in the door. Here, take a key to the building. That's me giving their authority. Jesus, though, he's on another level. He said, do you believe in me? In other words, are you living your life following me? If the answer is yes, that you surrendered and you're following him, he said, here's some keys. And these are not just keys to a building like this. These are keys to the kingdom. Where whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Woo! My, 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 my. I could get stirred easy. But I'm giving you these seven truths that will help you through any situation. What's number one? Somebody tell me number one. And Jesus died for you. Number two. He rose again. Number three. He has all authority in heaven and on earth. Glory to God. Number four. He gave you his authority. Number five, here it is. Jesus is at the right hand of God this morning. Ooh, I like this one. You'll start to see why when I give you point six and seven because they're all related. The right hand of God is the place of authority, ultimate authority. We know God Almighty it's not a cuss word. Don't you dare use that as a cuss word. He is God Almighty, right? He is the Almighty One, and He reigns from heaven. Yeah, right now this morning in the throne room, they're singing praises to Him. I, saw, I sense the Holy Spirit on me just saying that. Sometimes you got to remind yourself because you go through real stuff. And you got to say, wait a minute. 
He died for me. He rose again. He has all authority. He gave me authority. And he sat down. What does that mean? He's done with his part. He did what you can never do. Woo! And by his obedience, he's been perfected. Hebrews 5, 9 says forever. Somebody say forever. forever. He's got that position at the right hand. That's God's favorite position. He's delegated all judgment to the Son. Woo-wee. Somebody say, I don't believe this. Well, you're full of demons, and I tell them to come out in Jesus' name so you can see the truth before it's too late. Because when you take your last breath, you're going to wish you'd paid attention to truths like this. Now, why did I point these out? Because you got to know number six. Get ready to write this down. Our authority goes all the way to the top. <laughs> yeah, our authority is not just like, well, I'm connected at the mayor's office. No, 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 you don't understand. I'm connected. I got a connection at the White House. Hey, that's great. That's good. Let me tell you something. I got a connection to the throne room. My authority goes all the way right to the top. Yeah, I like that one. You got to think about this. When you deal with situations that are subject to change, one thing that's not subject to change is the Word of God and the King who reigns eternal. He will never change. There's no shadow of turning in Him. He reigns, and when you take the authority He's given, you got to understand that authority goes all the way to the top. enemy has no authority in your life other than what you give him. I'm going to repeat that. The enemy has no authority in your life other than what you give him. This is why we must get rid of anger. We must get rid of envy. We must make sure our ears are finely tuned to hear the voice of God. We've got to keep our ears clean. I will say, uh, it's funny, uh, every time I clean my ears this week, I thought about my preaching. I said, I'm cleaning this out so I can hear. And I've been in several situations, whether it's on the jet or other places, where it's kind of hard to hear what people are saying, especially when they talk quiet. They talk real quiet. And this, this is what you got to realize. The number one way the Lord's going to speak to you is in a still, small voice. That's why if you're cluttered with all kinds of other noise, you're going to be the one saying, oh, I missed it. What? Huh? What? 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 Or your life will look that way. And what some people that have natural hearing problems decide to do is not use any tool to help them. They decide just to bang their way through it, and it gets tough. Now, I will say this. There are times you need to speak up and speak loud when you're talking to other people if they can't hear you. I will say this. God is not one you tell to speak up to. Could you speak up, please? Especially when he's already got me in your life preaching the way I preach. It's pretty much like if you're living the drab, average American Christian life, you come in here, you feel like you're getting slapped on the left cheek and the right every time. And that's not my intention. The truth of the matter is this. The enemy wants to dull your hearing. He has no authority in your life other than what you give him. So if you settle to have a spiritual hearing problem, that's not on God and that's not on the devil. You're the one that gave him place. I'm exposing why he runs rampant in a lot of people's life. I want you to look now at Matthew 13. Say, thank God for the word. Verse 10, the disciples came to Jesus, and they ask a very good question. I like these good questions from the Bible. Why do you speak to them in parables? Jesus did not say, just mind your own business, boys. Instead, he said in Matthew 13, 11, because it's been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. Now, some people have stopped preaching. I've actually heard a sermon preached on this years ago 
where the guy's talking about the, you know, God and his providence. He chooses some and others he doesn't. That's not the way God operates. He goes on to explain that statement. It's not that God said, well, for you it's been given, for others it hadn't. There were people that were sitting there that if they had their spiritual ears on, they could have heard the truth that was coming through that story and could have attached to that, and everything could have changed. He says, for whoever has, to him more will be given. And we read a scripture like this recently, uh, and I'm going to read this one because it's so good. He says, and to he, excuse me, let me back up. Whoever has to him, more will be given, and he will have abundance. Everybody say abundance. Now, now write this down. This isn't a point I have on the screen. I have several other points on the screen, but you got to write this down. Your hearing is connected to your abundance. Your hearing is connected to your abundance. He says, whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. Your lack is connected to your hearing. Write that one down too. So abundance is connected to hearing. Lack is connected to hearing. All the while, God's saying the same words. And he's speaking to everyone. He's not willing any perish. That shows you God is no respecter of persons. That's written throughout the scriptures. God doesn't favor somebody over the other. It's just some people hear better than others. They've trained their ears to hear. Now, verse 13 explains this. I want you to look at this right here, Matthew 13. Therefore, I speak to them in parables because seeing they do not see. Now, I want you to look at this part, the latter part of Matthew 13, 13. If you're listening by radio, get your Bible out. you got to look this up. Matthew 13, 13. It says here, and hearing, they do not hear, nor do they understand. Woo, man. There's some really good truth right here. Get this. Jot this down. This is on the screen. A hearing problem will always produce a lack of understanding. And a lot of Christians, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. It's a hearing problem. It's a hearing problem. Why do I say that? Because in that verse he says, hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Folks, I see this every single time I preach. Someone says on this side, well, this is what you said. Someone over here, they actually got the truth on it. It's just amazing, or vice versa, wherever you're sitting. Because it doesn't really matter where you're sitting in here. What matters is your hearing. And what you've done before you walked in here has a lot to do with that. Which, the way services are set up, and most people don't understand this, you come in, we worship the Lord. It's to get all your junk that you're dealing with out so you can focus on the Lord so you have ears to hear what He's saying. But see, if you're distracted during worship, then you're going to be distracted when the Word's coming to be planted. And it'll be absolutely unfruitful in your life. I wish I wrote the rules, but I didn't. This applies to me, it applies to all of us. So what do you think the enemy's going to do? He's going to try to distract you during the time that's most important of your whole week. I've watched it. People check ball game scores when they're here in church. Oh, I got you. I got to see the score. I got to see. The... You know, you could just DVR and watch it later. You know, I, I mean, honest. I want to see who wins uh, the Open today in golf. I want to see it. But you know what? Imagine a pastor is just MIA. And you're like, where's he at? Oh, he stayed home to watch the British Open. What would you think about pastor, see? God say, oh, I don't want a pastor like that. Well, a pastor doesn't want sheep like that either. A good one. Yeah. I had to tell you, I said something at Chris McMichael's. I feel like repeating right now just because I knew it was from the Holy Ghost. Your blue ribbon as a sheep, it'd be like your chain hanging low. <laughs> you're so good. But if you don't follow, somebody needs to just snatch that thing right off your neck. What in the world? You're a blue ribbon sheep, but you don't follow? Wow, it's a dirty shame. You allow things to come in and clog up your ears so you don't hear? Well, I just don't understand. That's a way you can gauge your hearing. Well, I just don't understand. There's a hearing problem. There's a hearing problem. This gives a place to the enemy, a way for him to defeat you. Never forget this statement. The enemy always picks on those with the least amount of knowledge. And there's two kinds of knowledge in this world. There's natural knowledge. That's based on how you feel, your senses. And then there's this knowledge. Are you listening closely? Revelation knowledge. 
That's the two kinds of knowledge. So when I say the devil picks on those with the least amount of knowledge, it's not the least amount of natural knowledge. It's the least amount of revelation knowledge. Now, revelation knowledge only comes one way, by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Somebody said, no, that's faith, preacher. You're confused. It says faith in Romans 10. No, listen to me very clearly. Faith is given to you in the new birth package, along with love, along with righteousness, along with wisdom. These four in infancy form are in your spirit the day you're born again and you receive Jesus. It's up to you to develop them. Here's what develops them. Revelation. How does revelation come? By hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and finally it dawns on you and you say, whoa, that's written to me. Garrett said something a while ago that's pretty profound and I don't think we caught it. He said, Galatians 6 really became revelation to me in 2016. Here's a newsflash for those of you who don't know. Garrett wasn't born again in 2016. He was born again before that, and that wasn't the first time he had ever read or seen Galatians 6. So here's what happens, and this is all over in churches across America. i got to go somewhere where somebody's saying something I've never heard before. You don't need that. You haven't even been a good steward over what you have heard. You still don't understand some of the basic things, such as repentance is not a one-time event. It's a lifestyle you live. That's a very basic milk toast part, and a lot of Christians don't know that. And I know they don't not know it because they can't stand the guys that go out on the front lines on the streets and tell people to repent. They say, that ain't going to do no good. And I think, boy, how do you have really got your ears clogged? You have no way of knowing what person's walking down that street who has a grandma or a mom or a sister or a brother or a dad that's been praying or a pastor that's been praying for them that labors would be sent their way and you never know because we don't understand all that in the spirit. But when you're praying, it's work. I'm telling you, it's going to work because God's going to send someone and it may be a wild street preacher standing on a stool looking like a fool to this world saying, Repent! And for some reason, it reverberates in the spirit and wakes someone up. Someone asked me the other day, why do you scream, wake up, like I did last week? Because every time I do it, I don't know, we're not robots. I'm just telling you, I see in the spirit, someone wakes up. Because those demon spirits hate that. They want to keep you asleep. But now it's high time to awake from your sleep. It's high time to awake. Time's ticking, man. What are you doing? It's time to awake from your sleep. It's time to stop playing games with God. It's time to get real with Him. It's time to follow Him and to serve Him with all your heart. Well, once again, thank you so much for tuning in to today's A Television Broadcast. Well, that does wrap up today's message, that does not conclude the message in its entirety. If you would like to hear the rest of this message, you can head over to AccelerateChurch.cc and click on the Sermons tab. Or if you're in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We are located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo. Our service times are Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. and Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Hey, if we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next television program.